claiming the item was misrepresented because it was missing a hand. I kind of sort of lost it when we got the return. Like I really kind of lost. It was a vintage set from 1995 yeah. and probably some of the pieces are hard to find. So we had no Ooh, cost. The tornado. I know, right? Those poor horses. This has brought them in so much money and it just, it amplifies itself. It stacks. Yeah. I, oh, good on you, <laughs> jerk. <laughs> Welcome to our What Sold video for June 30th through July 6th, where we will go over every item that sold across multiple platforms for our reselling business. Let's dive in. All right, the first item that sold was a lot of seven sand molds. It was various ones that we found in thrift store toy bags and we had paid just 20 cents for those. They sold for $9.99. Next up was a lot of two St. Arnold, that's a beer maker I guess, Fancy Lawnmower Pint. I guess that's the name of the beer. The lawnmower, uh, Fancy Lawnmower was the beer flavor. It actually, I, I don't know if this is a typo, but, but it says Lawn Mover. That might have been why it didn't sell for a oh. while. Because I think it was lawnmower, but it might have been lawn mover. Yeah, I don't know. That might have been a typo. I so think that was a typo. That might have been a what held it up from selling. But this was just pint glasses. And we got these at Goodwill for $2.17. They sold for $32.99. Next up was a Women's Express Boat Neck Lace Hem Bell Sleeve Bodysuit. We found this in a storage unit for $0.28, cents and it sold for $15. Next up was a lot of three. It included two clear ones and one white ones. We described these as Eiffel Tower long stem flower vases. They did have flaws. I think it was like minor chipping or something on them. I don't remember exactly. But we found these actually in the same storage unit that we got that express bodysuit. We paid 28 cents and they sold for $35. Next up was a New Testament pocket Bible. It was gilded, and it was by the A.J. Holman Company from 1979. This one was really fancy looking. Yeah. It was a really nice compact Bible. We, uh, Kevin got this at the thrift store for $0.70, cents and it sold for $42.48. This so. is the from the hall. I got a really good haul one day. They were redoing the parking lot of the thrift store I like to go to. Yeah. And so... There was more stuff than usual because people weren't going in, but I had to wait for like a half an hour of conversation between a mother and daughter about their dresses and what they had worn on various occasions. Yeah. They were standing right in front of the book section. I'm just patiently waiting because, I mean, I, you couldn't get to it yeah. at all. But I went back. I circled back when I was done with everything else, and they finally were moving, and I got a whole bunch of good stuff, and this was one of them. Hopefully they And that was a really dresses. good one. That was like Did a 30 they find their dresses? Oh, I don't know, because some of them were too short. <laughs> they were looking for modest dresses. Like, I could wear that to here, but I can't wear that to church. Yeah. That was the conversation I was hearing for, yeah. like, 20 minutes. Yeah. It was like, oh, come back. <laughs> but it's good I went back. Next up was a <sighs> pair of Crocs Women's Croc Band Magenta Pink Thong Flip flip-flop sandals. We got these at a garage sale. These were like lower end Crocs, but I'm telling you all Crocs always sell for us. We paid $2 for these and these sold fast for $14 even. Next up was a brand new with tags, New York and Company white lace front trapeze tank top. It was new with tags. We got this at the thrift store. We picked it up because it had tags. We paid $3.79 and it sold for $13 even on Poshmark. <laughs> And if you're not already selling on Poshmark and you're interested in checking it out, you can get $10 to spend when you sign up with my link in the description box below. And I also wanted to remind you guys about the awesome service that we've been using called Posh Sidekick. It is an automation tool that helps you use Poshmark. And if you know anything about using Poshmark, it is kind of a high maintenance app. You, to be successful when selling on Poshmark, you have to interact with it daily. You have to go in, share your closet, follow other sellers and send offers. And you have to do that really multiple times a day to be able to get regular sales on Poshmark. And Posh Sidekick will go in and automate all of that for you so that you don't have to do it. So before I had Posh Sidekick, I rarely interacted with Poshmark really because I just didn't have time and I would forget. I have so much going on with all of the various different 
work things that we do and just how busy we are in our lives. So I would forget about it. And we rarely had any Poshmark sales because I didn't do what I needed to do to stay active on the, on the site. But Posh Sidekick has helped us more than double, probably like quadruple our sales on, Posh, on Poshmark. And you can see that I now have 76,000 shares, 25,000 followers, and I am following 40,000 people. And if I go into my news feed on Poshmark, you can see just in the last few minutes how many activities I have. I have like all these people that are following me, how many times my listing has been shared, how many times I've shared people's listings, and you can just see how active my account has been. And that is all due to Posh Sidekick. And it has directly resulted in sales. So if that's something that you guys are interested in trying, we do have a link in our description box below to try it out. And you can get 10% off with our coupon code, the Nina's Jewels 10. So, all right, moving on, the next item on the list was a Warner Easy Does It Small Molded Cup Bralette. This was actually mine and it sold for $11 even on eBay. I think it was light, it was like two ounces. Yeah, yeah. Next up was a vintage 1990s lot of eight toy horse saddles. It included some Barbie saddles, some Grand Champions, that's what GC stands for, Grand Champion saddles and bridles and reins. Some of them, I didn't know what brand they were, they weren't marked, but it was just, you know, you, you're getting what's in the picture kind of thing. And they were all vintage. And most of these came from friends or family, but some of them came from various toy bags and things, but pretty much our cost was like cents or zero. And they, these sold very fast for $19.99. I tried to ID them and they were so basic looking I wasn't able to, but they did sell quickly for full asking price. Next up was a 2017 Westminster Pocket Arcade Solitaire handheld game. This we got at a garage sale for, I have it listed actually as a dollar in our spreadsheet, but technically they only charged us 25 cents. Yeah. I just spread the wealth a little when bit on, the video. on our spreadsheet. But this sold really quickly for $12. And I have heard and seen, the reason why I picked this up is because I had seen on other YouTube resellers that pocket arcade games sell really well and different ones will sell for higher amounts and I do know that the best way is to sell them in like big lots but the reason why I picked this up is because I know they will sell fast and this one did sell fast also. Next up was a 1996 Pinnacle Starburst baseball card for the player Mark McGuire. This was Kevin's and it sold for $2.79. Next up was a vintage Francoma pottery wagon wheel lidded casserole serving dish. We got this at that garage sale where we got all of the vintage Francoma. We got a great deal on that. We got like two bags full for $10. Yeah, it was like it was an lot. unheard of deal. Because we see cool. Francoma at like estate sales and they have them marked at like $10 a piece or something. Yeah. And we got all of them for $10. So this she piece. She wanted it gone. She did. Uh, this piece sold for $38.38. Next up was a Jennifer Lopez women's white high-rise button fly pair of jean shorts. These were gifted to us to sell and they sold for $15 even. Next up was a Trader Joe's fabric pickle in a jar reusable tote bag, grocery bag. This sold Actually, this I purchased on Mercari with my Mercari bucks. So anybody who used my affiliate link, thank you so much. That was purchased in due in part because of you clicking on the uh, affiliate link and I do really appreciate it. So we were out of pocket on this purchase for $1.91 and we sold it for $12.99 on eBay. And do be on the lookout for Trader's, Trader Joe bags. Some of them are worth a lot and some of them are just kind of bread and butter ones like this one or uh, bread and butter pickles, I guess. Uh, <laughs> oh, bread and butter pickles, yeah. Ah, yeah. Da, da, da. Oh, Thanks. I liked really it. Good. Thanks. Next up was a Shikini women's ruffled hem swim dress. We got this from the Via Trading Box that we got, and that one sold for $29.89. 
And the one, the bathing suits that we got from Matt that sold the very best were the swim dress dresses. Oh yeah, like yeah. most of the swim dresses sell have sold. Yeah, we have a ton of bikinis. I think yeah, the bikinis. Nobody have, wants bikinis, I guess. I guess people are comfortable like going into a store and buying a bikini, but they want to buy a swim dress online. Yeah, that's kind of my assessment. Yeah. Yeah. So the more modest the bathing suit, the more likely it is to sell online. I, I guess. don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, or it could just all be coincidence. It could be. I don't know. But we've sold out of or are close to selling out of the swim dresses and bikinis are like not selling <laughs> not <laughs> at all. all. All right. Next up was a lot of two 30 degrees cool. I think this is a Walmart brand. And these were men's medium short sleeve solid t-shirts in like pastel colors. These were gifted to us to sell. We had no cost and they sold for $11.98. Very plain, five bucks though. Yeah. Next up was a vintage 1995 lot of Barbie Feeding Fun Stable playset 22 replacement pieces. Just random pieces from that set Nothing, you know, that was like complete. It was like a door from the yeah. stable, little it was accessory like pieces. The stable after a tornado. <laughs> yeah, it was not a lot, but you oh, know, there's some. This is a vintage set from 1995, yeah. and probably some of the pieces are hard to find. So we had no well, cost. The tornado. I know, right? Those poor horses. So we had no cost on this, and it sold for twenty four dollars and ninety nine cents. So before we continue, I'd like to ask you to take a moment to like and subscribe. We would really appreciate that. And we're going to take a moment also to discuss our topic for this week's video, which is promoted listings. Mm -hmm. What do you think about promoted listings? I hate them and I like them. So recently I was editing a listing in eBay. I had to relist something that was canceled. And when you relist, it doesn't carry over the promoted rate so you have to go back in and edit the promoted the promoted rate and so i went in to do that i wanted to promote the listing and it was already active and i clicked on edit promoted listing from like the little listed the little listing drop down menu on the active listing page and a new window popped up and there was new verbiage on that pop-up that I had never seen before. And it was kind of describing the promotions in a way that was new to me. So it looked like eBay has rebranded the promotion parts of their program. And I found the way that they had described them for me personally to be very vague and confusing. And I would consider myself a seasoned seller. We've been selling for, let's see how many years it says now. We have been selling since 2008. We've been selling since 2008 and I found it vague and confusing. So I can imagine if you are a new reseller coming into that, that it would be extremely vague and confusing to a new reseller. So it's a topic that we wanted to take a little bit deeper look at and I wanted to go into, I researched it and I wanted to explain what I found. So basically eBay offers two options for for sellers to promote their listings. The first one is what they are now calling the general campaign strategy. So this is what used to be called promoted listings standard and is probably what you hear most sellers refer to when they say promoted listings. And for that kind of campaign, for a general campaign strategy, you are only paying for your promoted listing when it sells through a click on your ad. So eBay defines an ad, this is where it gets vague, as text, graphics, a listing title, a listing description, or other features and functionality eBay may make available, associate with, or incorporate into your listing, e.g. add to watch list icons. That's literally what it says in their fine print. So I found that to be very vague and I really struggled to have a clear understanding of exactly all the ways eBay is promoting my item when I use the general campaign strategy. So I do know that it means that eBay will at times make your listing appear higher in the search results 
and that your item might be shown to buyers like as a related search item when they're searching for other items. And I've also noticed recently that when I look at an item from another seller on eBay that I will receive like a message or a push notification about their item later with a call to action to buy like, hey, you looked at this item and this seller offers free shipping or this seller offers free returns or something along those lines, maybe you want to buy this item. So I don't know if that's considered part of the promotion strategy. I, I honestly don't know. The, that's just speculation on my part. But those are all the ways that eBay might be promoting my items. And another thing to note is that if a buyer clicks on a promoted ad and purchases your item within 30 days, that ad rate applies. After 30 days, then the ad rate is not supposed to apply. But there's no real proven way to, to know, you know when the buyer clicked on your ad and eBay doesn't provide any yeah. evidence. How would, we, yeah. how would we have any access They to don't that? provide any evidence yeah. on that. So even if the buyer clicked on your promoted ad and then later buys your item from a non-promoted listing, that ad rate still applies if they purchase it within 30 days of having clicked on that promoted listing. They got that cookie. They, yep, exactly. That sweet cookie. <laughs> so the general campaign works by promoting your listing at a percentage-based ad rate. So you can promote either at a, what eBay is calling now a dynamic rate, which was formerly referred to as the eBay recommended rate, or you can promote at a fixed ad rate. So the dynamic rate automatically updates to eBay's daily suggestion, and that would make you as competitive as possible. But that also means that what you're, the percentage that you're promoting at could vary wildly. You could be promoting one day at 5%, and you could be promoting the next day at 16%, and it's all dependent on what eBay thinks is going to get you the best results to stay as competitive as possible given how much other people are promoting at and what the, you know, the climate is on that item any given day. The more I hear you, exp I hear you saying what it is, that is very sketchy. Yeah. Because eBay is in charge of all of those rates. Yeah. So they could just accidentally or bump some of the rates up and then oh now you have to bump up to compete with this one and oh now you have to bump up yeah like they could be the cause of the entire yeah fluctuation right in the market right that is shady i never even thought of that until just listening to you explain that that's shady so with a so fixed shady. rate you pick a percentage that you are comfortable with and that rate doesn't adjust unless you go in and manually edit it so you could pick a rate the lowest rate you can pick is 2%. So you can pick a rate as low as 2% going up to 100%, which, you know, obviously you're not going to make any money. You would actually lose money. But you could pick a rate from 2% to 100% and promote your item at any rate in between. I also find that the system shouldn't allow you to set it at 100%. Yeah, well. That, that seems also very sketchy. <laughs> It should only have, it should have a cap of eighty percent or seventy five percent or something. That that seems very sketchy. Yeah, hundred percent ad rate. I agree. So with this program, eBay claims that you will receive twenty five percent more clicks on average. Note that it doesn't say that you will receive twenty five percent more sales. They claim that you will receive twenty five percent more clicks. But I would like to point out again that there is no measurable way to determine if you are actually getting 25% more clicks. I mean, I suppose you could turn off promoted listings or the general campaign strategy and then compare it to the time before, but there's so many other variables and factors that I don't know that that, that would be like a valid test. But, you know, they do claim that it will receive 25% more clicks on average. Yeah. So the second option for promoting is called a priority campaign strategy. So this is a newer option that's offered from eBay and it claims to, and I'm quoting here, target motivated buyers and effective ad placements. So for this campaign, you pay when someone clicks on your ad yeah. and that's regardless of whether your item sells or not. So you're paying to advertise your item. It doesn't matter if your item sells or not. With the one that we were talking about before, you're only paying if your item sells. With this one, you're paying to advertise whether it sells or not. So you can have that item listed for 10 years and if it doesn't sell, you're still paying to advertise it. And you set up a daily campaign budget. 
And that daily budget is the maximum amount that you're willing to spend each day to promote all the listings that you place within this campaign. So if you wanna advertise every item in your store and you wanna spend, let's just say for an even number, you wanna spend $10 a day to advertise every item in your store, they will advertise every item in your store, but you're spending $10 a day, regardless of whether you sell a single item or not. And then once your campaign has reached that $10 of budget, your campaign will stop sending ads until the next day, and then the budget resets and it spends another $10. So then you would spend $300 a month to advertise your store, regardless of sales or no sales. So I have not tried that kind of strategy. Yeah, I guess you could mathematically do it and you could look and if you promote your listings already and you see you average out, do a month's worth and see how much you paid in promoted fees mm -hmm. and then average that out to a daily cost. Yeah. You could maybe do it that way and then see if your sales it's went up idea. or down. That's a good experiment level. Yeah. That's, that's the only way I can think of you could do it fairly. Yeah. What are you already paying in promoted fees? Right. And then spend that much. Yeah. And then if it doesn't help sales or if sales go down, just go back to the yeah. promoted fees. But we haven't done this yet. I mean, it's hard for me to justify prepaying for someone just to look at the listings. I know. But it's just advertising. Exactly. Yeah. But eBay does claim that 50% more items are sold with this campaign on average, which is different than what they this says claimed sold, with the other one. Clicks. Yeah, the other one said clicks. They say 50% more items are sold with this campaign on average, but they have no evidence to back it up. They, there's no measurable way to determine that. But let us know if you have tried it in the comments below. Let us know your experience with this if you've had any. We might should try. We might should do an experiment and try this. Yeah, I'm just hesitant to give any, eBay any money for something like this. I know. Yeah. But we'd be turning off promoted listings regular for it. Yeah. So maybe do it in something that has a high promoted fee. Yeah. Like some things we do at ten percent, some things we do at four percent, or yeah. Or, yeah. So one of the higher ones and try it on that. So speaking of, I do find a lot of the information surrounding how eBay promotes to be super confusing and I wish they would be a lot more transparent about what they consider to be promoting. And I also wish that when an item sold via a promoted listing that they would share exactly how it was promoted with the seller. Like what action did the buyer take yeah. to make the sale? Just help us make determinations about how we are Business strategy. Exactly. How straight? Yeah, exactly. Um, so for full disclosure, we do promote all of our listings at a low rate. We use the what's now called the general campaign strategy, what was formerly called the eBay standard promoting promotion. And as a listing ages, we promote at a higher rate. But I personally struggle with the program because I have watched the promoted, the recommended ad promotion rate climb higher and higher over the years. It went from single digits when it first started to now it's like sometimes up to 16% or more on certain categories. And while we do see results from promoting, I will not deny that we see results. I see that it is like a slippery slope. And as more people participate in the program, the benefits and the value for the money have just become less and less because to achieve the same results, you have to continue promoting at a higher and higher rate. Well, this and is what I was talking yeah, about earlier. It just becomes untenable. It's their own. This was a genius idea yeah. from eBay, honestly. <laughs> yeah. Especially this automatic let us I don't adjust think it was the e rate. Yeah. Honestly, I don't think it was eBay's idea. Well, probably not, but I mean, <laughs> it's probably to, Amazon's to idea. <laughs> whatever executive implemented this got a nice package for Christmas. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because. This has brought them in so much money and it just, it amplifies itself. It stacks. Yeah. I, oh, good on you, jerk. <laughs> so if you do choose to promote, I just recommend that you do what you feel comfortable with and then stick with that and realize that reselling is going to come with ebbs and flows and don't let the ebbs make you panic and then suddenly decide I'm going to need to start promoting at a higher rate to deal with the ebbs and flows. I just think that there are ebbs and flows with reselling and yes. promoting is not always the answer. However, 
you do what feels right to you. And I know that there are some resellers that don't promote at all and they are extremely successful. And I also know of some resellers that use the recommended rate and that's all they use. And they're also really successful. And I just don't think there's one right way to do it. And I think both yeah. strategies can work. And we're right in the middle. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So hopefully this has shed some light on the way eBay promoted listings work for you guys. If you enjoyed it and you found it helpful, go down to the comments and put a star emoji down there so that I know that you found it helpful. So going back to what's old. So next up was a 2016 Fisher Price Little People. This was an Eddie student figure. And this sold fast. We got this at a garage sale. Um, I have zero on the spreadsheet. Do you know why? Uh, I oh, I know why. This I, I had collected a bunch of little people on my desk because I was um, <clears throat> I was just gonna wait and list them all together. I had already applied the cost of what we had spent at that garage sale to something else. So this uh, sold for $9.99 and it sold really fast, like within a few weeks. Uh, next up was a Magic the Gathering Mirage, that the set was Mirage. This was a rule book. So it was like just the little instruction book that came with the card set. This was Kevin's, and so this one sold for $6.99. And it'll just fit in an eBay standard envelope. Yep. Next up was an OEM 2003 to 2006 Ford Expedition Silver Center cap, like a wheel cap. It had some flaws. It had some scratching and stuff on it. We found this in a storage unit. It was just the one single wheel cap. Yeah. We paid 28 cents for it. It sold for $19.99. This is the same storage unit. The other two things we sold from a oh, storage yeah. unit came it sure from. Was. You're right. It was a very successful storage unit. Just a slow burn. Yep. Next up was a Baby Alive Sweet Spoonfuls doll replacement halter dress. We were gifted this from friends and family. It actually came in one of the Barbie bags and it sold for $9.99. I actually saw this doll and she had on this dress at the Goodwill bins the other day on the video that just came out today. And hindsight 2020, I probably should have taken the dress off the doll. Oh, I, didn't even, I didn't see it. Yeah. <laughs> and grabbed it, but I'm not sure. Because this... a lot of the time those less valuable dolls yeah. aren't worth anything, but the, the clothes are still. Yeah. And I saw it and I even like picked it up and I was like, oh, baby alive. And then I put it back down. And, but I don't think this had sold yet. I think we had had it listed for a while and that's why I didn't grab it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, next up was a one of the Camp Archery Association pens. We got tons of these at an estate sale for three cents each, and they are yeah. slowly selling. Like I found a uh, like a, a tackle box in, yeah. in the garage of an estate sale. There were hundreds. And it had hundreds of those yeah. pins in there. Vintage. Oh, they're really sweet looking, too. And we sold tons of them. And we have hundreds of them left. Yeah. You know, so many. Yeah. So this one sold for $11.99. Yeah. Next up was... Oh, still makes me mad. This was a lot of Power Rangers, Super Megaforce, Q-Rex, Legendary, Megazord, parts only, like replacement parts for this action figure. And then uh, also a action figure Power Ranger that was missing a hand. So this was listed as parts only as is Reed. You can in see it title. clearly in the title. In the title. It was listed. Yeah, it was. we had very clear pictures of it. Someone sent me an offer for this item. It was kind of a low offer, but always the it's always the low offers. I was like, you know Where? what? I just want to get rid of this item. And I, when I accepted their offer, I responded back and I said, I will accept your offer, but I want to be clear that this is a parts only listing. And please be aware that it is parts only. And specifically, please be aware that the action figure is missing a hand. They, ex they accepted it, paid for it, and then they opened a return claiming the item was misrepresented because it was missing a hand. I kind of sort of lost it when we got the return. Like I really kind of lost it. Like I'm normally like really nice to people even when they call me a liar. She was, she was mad. I, I lost it. I really I lost my marbles on this person. And I responded to their return request with a message and said, remember in the listing where it said as is parts only and it showed the picture of the action figure with no hand and explained it in the listing? 
remember when I responded to your offer and reminded you that it said all of that and you acknowledged it? <laughs> and they said, oh, sorry, I forgot. And I responded back with, please close the return. I was so mad. And they responded back with, my son doesn't want it. And I was just like, okay. So I like did not want to accept the return, but what choice do you have? I mean, eBay gives you no other choice. So I had four days to accept the return or just not respond to it. I had four days basically to respond to it. So I responded back to the buyer at that point and said, it was the 12th and I had until the 16th to respond. And I said, I will respond to your return request by the 16th. I was just like, I'm just gonna make them wait. <laughs> I mean, it's terrible, but I was so frustrated. I was like, mm-mm. So after a couple days, I was like, this is pointless. Wendy, you're being petty. And I just went ahead and accepted the return request. And so far they have not made any effort to my knowledge to send the item back. I'm sure they will, but that's where we are with that. Consider that righteous pettiness. <laughs> I was just so mad. I'm still mad about it, but Next up was a lot of four gourmet settings, stainless steel loft dinner knives. We got this from a thrift store flatware bag for 24 cents and they sold for $21. This stuff sells pretty well. I know. Just even random sets. I know, as long as you can ID them. Mm -hmm. Next up was a Nook anti-colic baby bottle new in the box. We got this at a garage sale for a dollar and it sold for $12.99. Next up was a Bowdoin Women's Mustard Yellow Wool Blend Pea Coat. It's a I, really, really nice coat. It was very nice. I got this at the Salvation Army for $17. I got it on the same day that I purchased that like $375 brooch. It was a good day at the Army. It was. I paid $17 for this and it sold for $89.98. And that's a high cost, $17, yeah. but she knew it was worth it. And it was in really good shape and it was really nice. Yeah. Next up was a lot of four Thomas the Tank Engine youth books. We found these at mostly the thrift store and we paid 74 cents in total for those. They sold for $8 on Poshmark. Next up was a Vibe Sportswear Women's Black Satin Spaghetti Strap Slip Dress. We got this out of a storage unit and we paid 28 cents for it. It sold for $16.99. This is the second time it that's sold. come back, yeah. Yeah, so we did have a little bit lower profit on it and that's because we had, did have to ship it the first time it came back. But this time the buyer liked it, we got good feedback. Next up was a 2000 Austin, Texas street map guide and transportation foldout. This we got at a garage sale where we got a big box of maps. We paid nine cents per item and this sold for $11.99. Next up was a vinyl record, First Offense by Corey Hart. It did have sunglasses at night. Yeah. It did. Yeah. And we got that at the thrift store for 51 cents. It sold for $19.99. Next up was a lot of four Fisher Price Little People Zoo Talkers animal figures. We got these at a church rummage sale for a dollar and they sold for $22.99. Next up was a Divided by H&M Women's Denim Plaid Spaghetti Strap Dress. This was gifted to us to sell and it sold for $19.88. Next up was a 2009 Hasbro Go to the Head of the Class board game. It was complete and in excellent condition. This was gifted to us to sell and it sold for $20 even. Next up was a 2023 Sonic Wacky Pack Kids Meal. It was a matchbox fire truck called Blaze Blitzer. It was new in the package. This came from one of our kids meals, so we had no yeah. cost. And again, Sonic. Yeah. We got 420 of that meal back. And it sold for $10.38. Nice. That's a good discount. It is. Next up was a uh, another one of the Thule Holoport Vertical Kayak Carriers. Yeah, the second one. Yep. This one we paid $24.36 for at an estate sale, and it sold for $80. And last up was a 1996 Denny's Hologram Baseball Card. Another one from Mark McGuire. I didn't notice that earlier. Yeah, they yeah. are both Mark McGuire. This was Kevin's and it sold for $2.29. Next 
So our total number of sales was 36. Our average sale price was $21.03. Our sales totaled $756.90, and that made for a net profit of $381.31. Slow week. Slow week, for sure. Yeah. But we still had some interesting sales. Yeah, no, there was some good stuff in there. Yeah. All right, so that wraps up our video for this week. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Comment below if you have anything to add about the Promoted Listings Program or if you found it helpful, and we will catch you guys on the flip side.